Thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Story Time! Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to my page. Here we go. Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Today I will be reading to you all Thumbelina Fairy Tale Classics. All right, let's get into this. I um I don't really remember. I remember the name, but I don't remember the book. So it's Thumbelina retold by Diane Stortz Fairy Tale Classics. Okay. Once upon a time, a small swallow settled in a cozy little nest above a window in a village in the country of Denmark. Through the winter, the swallow told his wife about his adventures in another land. The swallow's wife loved to hear stories and to tell them, especially stories about the small, magical creatures called fairies. Those who, live, who love to listen to the swallow's song first heard his story, this story from him, a long time ago. There is a woman who greatly desired to have a child to love and care for, but she had none. She went to see a fairy. Do you know where I can get a tiny child to love and care for? She asks. Oh, yes, said the fairy. Take this barley corn, place it in a flower pot, watch what happens. The woman thanked the fairy and hurried home with the barley corn. She planted it in a flower pot. In the morning, a large tulip with its petals still close was growing in the pot. Through the window shone the rays of the sun. And as the sun warmed the tulip, the petals pushed open. In the center sat a tiny little girl. She was smaller than her thumb. And so the woman called her Thumbelina. The woman placed Thumbelina among some flowers floating in a shallow bowl of water. During the day, Thumbelina sat on a giant tulip leaf and watched the woman as she did her chores. At night, with a polished walnut shell for a cradle, a, a flower petal for her mattress, and a rose leaf for a blanket, Thumbelina slept quite comfortably. One, but one night, an ugly toad got into the woman's house through a broken window. The toad hopped up onto the table and found Thumbelina sleeping in her little boat. Whatever she is, she is very beautiful, said the toad. She would make a lovely wife for my son. With that, the toad carried the sleeping Thumbelina in her walnut shell bed to his home beside the stream. He set Thumbelina down on a large lily, lily leaf a far distance from the shore. Thumbelina was trapped. In the morning, all the toads came out to greet her. But Th Thumbelina did not want to live on the lily pad or marry the toad's ugly son. All she could do was cry. Aw, Thumbelina. Under the water, lots of little fish saw and heard what was happening. Together, they nibbled on a stalk that held Thumbelina's lily leaf until they cut through it and set the leaf free. Thumbelina floated away. The string carried Thumbelina past towns and villages. A butterfly settled lightly on the leaf and, let, and kept her company. But suddenly, a giant insect swooped down and carried Thumbelina away. You are so pretty, he told Thumbelina, and he set her on a leaf in his tree and gave her flower nectar for her supper. Everybody just kidnapped her, huh? Taking her all over the place. 
When other insects came to see the little creature, they did not think she was pretty. She has only two legs and no fillers, they said. How ugly, they cried. Sorry that, sorry that he had ever found Thumbelina. The insect flew her down from the tree to a daisy, left her on the daisy, and would have nothing to do with her. Poor Thumbelina spent the summer and fall living all alone in the woods. Her one joy was listening to the swallows, sweet songs. Then the long cold winter came. The birds flew away. The flowers died and the trees lost their leaves. Thumbelina wrapped herself into a maple leaf to try to keep warm, but it did not help much when the snow began to fall. Oh, this is kind of sad, y'all. Thumbelina wandered out of the woods into a cornfield. All of the corn had been harvested, but under one of the corn stalks, Thumbelina found the door to the home of a field mouse. Thumbelina knocked on the door and asked for something to eat. The field mouse was kind and invited Thumbelina to live with her for the winter. Just keep my house tidy and tell me stories every evening, said the mouse. One day the mouse had a visitor, a large black blind mole. Thumbelina shuddered when she met the mole, but she was polite and sang to him. As the field, mice, as the field mouse asked her to. He is rich, the mouse told her. He would make a good husband for you. Thumbelina shuddered again. Why is everybody trying to give off? Make her marry. I don't know. The mole was pleased with Thumbelina and her songs. He invited her and the mouse to join him at his home for tea. Holding a piece of phosphorescent wood that glowed like fire to light the way. The mole led Thumbelina and the mouse through a long, dark, underground tunnel. In the tunnel, the three came upon a frozen swallow. The mole and the mouse paid the swallow no mind, but Thumbelina was sad by, saddened by the sight. The night she wove a blanket of that night she wove a blanket of straw and covered the swallow with it. Thank you for your songs in the summer, she told the bird gently. Suddenly, the bird opened his eyes. He was not dead, only frozen, and Thumbelita's kindness had revived him. Wow, okay. Go ahead, Thumbelina. When spring came, the swallow was strong enough to fly again. Thumbelina made a hole in the roof of the tunnel so the bird could fly away. Please come with me, sang the swallow. The mole wanted to marry Thumbelina, and the mouse was determined that he would. Thumbelina spent hours spinning lace for a wedding dress, while the mole pl made plans for an early winter wedding, Thumbelina was said. On the morning of the wedding day, the mole arrived to escort Thumbelina to his underground home. Thumbelina ran outside once more to say goodbye to the sun, which she might never see again. Because she'll be with the mole underground. Just when the swallow flew by, Thumbelina saw him and burst into tears. Come with me now, begged the swallow. I am headed to warmer lands where it is always summer and there are always flowers. You saved my life. Now let me save yours. This time, Thumbelina agreed to go and climbed up onto the swallow's back. Together, they made the journey to a beautiful land filled with flowers and fruit. The swallow showed Thumbelina his nest on top of a splendid white castle. Then he set her down among the flowers to find a home. Thumbelina chose a perfect white lily. To her surprise, a little man was standing in the middle of the lily. He was the flower king. How handsome he is, 
thought Thumb Thumbelina. How lovely she is, thought the Flower King. He took his golden crown and set it on Thumbelina's head. Suddenly, there were fairies everywhere, clapping their hands. They brought Thumbelina a pair of silvery fairy wings and pinned them on. Thumbelina married the Flower King and became the Flower Queen. The swallow sang at their wedding. Then, because winter was over in Denmark, he flew back there and told this story to his family to his wife and now I have told it to you all right guys that is Thumbelina I hope you all liked it I liked it too I, I hope you all liked it I mean I liked it um but all right guys thank you all for tuning in bye